Nestled amongst vintage HTB flats in the Hokang heartland is an iconic campus with sky blue roofs and ivory walls. Welcome to Montfort. Although the current compound is just over 20 years old, the school's rich history predates Singapore's independence. Be it in the original campus along Upper Serangoon Road, or within the walls of the current Hokang Avenue 8 compound, for generations, Monford has transformed the lives of multitudes of students who have walked through its gates one boy at a time to become a man for others. On 9th April 2016, Monfort School held a fundraising dinner to mark its 100th anniversary. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung was the guest of honour. Mr Lee congratulated Monfort for its achievements over the century. Over the decades, these achievements have been varied. But for over a hundred years, the school's leaders and teachers have always relished one simple reward. For every month portion, my simple words to them would be Ajay Kwad Ajay, do well in whatever you set out to do. And if you carry this with you through your life, it will serve you well. Be that be in work, at play, in your lives, society, with friends, everything that you do, if you embody this, it will serve you very well. You can be rich, you know, you can be an expert in any field that you are, but at the end of it, you bring yourself down to a level where you know you empathize with the society around you. The other one would be respect. You know, I think the teachers has impart a very strong sense of respect. You know, Monfort, since the time when we started, was not known as you know, a top school in terms of academic performance and things like that, you know. But I think we have achieved a lot in terms of our overall standing. You know, and this is best exemplified by the people that we have produced who have gone on to leadership positions in Singapore society, in the Catholic Church. So it tells you that we have got something very precious here, that this is a good place. What makes this place special is that it draws on the teachings of St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, who in his lifetime was an educator and a priest. Till death, he always put others before himself. His great compassion for the poor, uh, picking up the poor on the streets sometimes, uh, helping poor children to get uh, some education so that they can learn the catechism. But he realised that children cannot learn catechism unless they learn to read and to write and to speak in their language. So he started schools basically because that was the felt need that he had among the poor children. There was no public schools in those days, as we see them today. Uh, so he began uh, charitable schools for boys and girls at the time when he was alive. Today, more than three centuries after his death in 1716, St. Louis' legacy lives on in seven educational institutions set up by a group of his followers known as the Brothers of St. Gabriel in Singapore. So as Brothers of St. Gabriel, while we are committed to education, but more than school education, for those who are not academically inclined, we also provide vocational training, uh, training in skills. The fundamental mission for us is to help uh, young people you know they are the hope they the future. Our helping them is not just helping them as individuals, but we know that if we help one member of the family, uh, that will also raise up uh, the whole family. From 1936 to 1974, when the brothers directly ran the school, they made education easily accessible to the then Kanka community, especially to poor families 
who could not afford to put their children through school. We had a number of brothers and they sacrificed everything uh, to fulfill their mission, which is to educate children from poor families. They didn't do it for themselves, they do it for others. Whatever uh, they would have earned as a teacher in a school went into their order. They don't have any material assets for themselves. So it was a total sacrifice for educating children. Today, this two-story building located within the grounds of the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary is the last surviving vestige from Mr. Lim Boon Heng's time at school. For a century, it's been a silent witness to monumental events such as its transition from a parish school to one run by the Brothers of St. Gabriel, the school's brief closure during World War II, its rebranding from Holy Innocents English School to Monfort School, and its eventual demolition and relocation to the current campus in Hokang Avenue 8. Even though the surroundings might be different, this historic site still evokes a strong sense of nostalgia among alumni. Back then, there's only one canteen that serves both the primary and the secondary school. We literally grew up in the canteen right, for the whole of 10 years and eating the same food. Till today, I think a lot of us will still remember the taste and the smell of the misiam or the mirubus. You know, things that happened behind the church, a lot of uh, private settlements were done, a lot of eraser fighting, kuti kuti fighting were done. The old field was where a lot of uh, also settlements take place, a lot of catching spiders around the drain that surrounds the school. But while old buildings may be gone, the school continues to soldier on. As it continues its century-old mission of moulding students to achieve their fullest potential in service of others, either as a scholar, sportsman, gentleman, or leader. These students represent the future generation of Singaporeans. In 20 years' time, they'll be joining the workforce, fulfilling their dreams and contributing to society. Giving them the academic foundation and encouragement to strive towards their ambitions starts early. And for over a century, Monford has inspired students to realize their dreams and reach their full potential by three words. The school motto, which is Ajay Kwad Ajis, which means to do well in whatever you do. So whenever in my studies, I would always remember this value, excellence, and always do my best and try my best. If you mention the word scholar to anyone, it essentially would be someone who has uh, done amazingly well for his uh, academic studies. Yes, we want our boys to do their best in that field too, but we also explain to them that the process is important. We want you to be self-directed so that you learn to be an independent learner and you strive for what you want. As you learn, continue to be humble. Be open-minded to learn from others. That will enable you to truly become wise. For decades, Monfort School's approach to grooming scholars has always centred on a simple ideal to transform lives by teaching minds and touching hearts. As teachers, we start off by forming relationships. So touching their heart, forming their heart. Next, we move on to giving them ways of thinking in order to shape their mind. And if we do both right, we will transform lives. We reach the boy to mold the man. This approach is based on the philosophy of the school's founder, St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, who advocated that schools are like nursery gardens in which children, like little trees, are pruned and trained with care that they may bring forth and grow good fruit. It takes many years to grow a tree, right? and along the way, 
You have to care for it, you have to prune it so that it reaches its full potential. And that's what we need to see our kids as. Right? That this is not just a six-year journey for them, this is going to be a lifelong journey for them. At this point of time, I am the appointed gardener, and the gardeners will change along the way. But we all have this very clear view of where this child's potential could be and how we're going to help the child to move towards that. Good education does not mean that results is the only measure for good education. A good education will be shown in their life when they are older, when they are out there in society, how they can become contributing members of society. It doesn't matter whether you are at the back of the class or you are at the top of the school, we'll treat every child in the same way. Over the past century, Monfort has produced a number of scholarship winners across the different cohorts. But one cohort which stands out is the class of 1975. In this golden year, eight Monfortians from the graduating A-level cohort were offered scholarships to study in foreign universities. One of them was Kwek Sir Tong, who won the Colombo Plan Scholarship to study civil engineering in Victoria, Australia. We actually are very thankful for the school for nurturing us to gain the scholarship to study overseas. During that time, I don't come from a rich family, so even going to Singapore University may be a problem. So with the scholarship, is something like people striking lottery. He's currently a professor at the National University of Singapore's School of Engineering. He still retains close ties with the school. Today, together with other illustrious alumni, he serves as an advisor to both Monfort School's mega programs. I think it is a duty for us that we should try to give back as much as we can to make sure that the next generation do as well, if not better than us. Behind every scholar stands a proud teacher whose greatest reward is their students' success. And across the decades, cohort after cohort have been touched by the care and dedication displayed by their teachers. Some unfortunates were so inspired by their teachers' passion for grooming scholars that they returned to the school years later as educators themselves. I taught in Monfort for 41 years. I started teaching in Monfort after I left school. Actually, teaching is a very rewarding job. Even after I retired and when I go this place or that place, a lot of people say, Hello, Mr. T, how are you? Uh, my name is James Chung. I'm basically a student of the school and currently a teacher. When I was a student in primary school, really, um, the teachers were the ones who have actually impacted me. So from there, I made up my mind to really join teaching at that point in time. Hi, my name is Shakil Sarfian. I'm an ex fortune and I have a strong aspiration for art. I guess I, I was very, I'm very grateful for my teachers. When there was a time I failed in my art, I was very wrecked. My teachers have been supporting me. They didn't school me that I scored a, a low mark. My teacher has encouraged me to do something I love, and that's all that matters to me in my life. I'm back here just to help students who need help with their artwork. I try to give them tips and tricks that they can utilize it and also prosper from it. Monfort School's approach of maturing children from seedlings to trees has continued to bear fruit over the years. But the schools constantly need to adapt to the changing times. To prepare Monfortians for the future, both schools embrace boy-centric education through programs that promote a maker's culture and emphasize problem solving. These include coding and applied learning. We try to make the environment in classroom where they are able to learn at their pace. We make it boy-centric so it engages them, they are passionate about them. And through that process, they start to believe in themselves that I can learn, that I can do this. And if they are able to follow on with this when they go out to work, or that they are still open to learning when they reach the age of 60, that is how we define this problem. What we have continued from the past is to always remind ourselves that the boy, the child, is the centre of all that we do. Let us try to customise, personalise our education as best as we can. 
we are not able to replace the dedication, the sacrifices that the brothers uh, made when they were teachers. But when many of the programs that we plan come together well, that's when we see uh, we are able to transform the lives of our boys and make a difference for them. A self-directed learner with a strong work ethic, adaptable to changes in the continued quest for wisdom. These are some of the qualities of the Monfortian Scholar. A 100-year-old legacy steeped in the philosophy and values of the school's founding father. Values that will continue to shape Monfortian's generations to come. In nurturing boys to realize their full potential, Monfort doesn't just focus on academic performance. The school has a rich sporting tradition as well. Sports have always been hailed as opportunities for boys to pursue excellence in physical performance and to develop character. One of the events that is quite unique to Monfort Junior is our obstacle race. Uh, so we do it uh, once every three years and we had all the boys from young primary one all the way to the P6s going through a series of obstacles. Right? They have to climb, they have to crawl and do many things. Some had really a lot of difficulties and fears but they overcame it. Some by themselves but many because their friends were there with them. We were cheering them on, they said, hey, come let's go, I'll hold your hand. When you do things like this, you start to appreciate what sports is all about. That you're not in this alone, that there are always people with you. And having the sense of resilience, don't give up. Being a sportsman requires team spirit and humility. Team spirit because you got to work with everyone in your team. You don't choose your teammates. It's not really much of skill, it's more of chemistry. If you don't like this person, how are you going to communicate with him on the field? Imagine you have the ball. They need to throw to a guy that you don't like. Like, it doesn't feel right. You gotta have that bond. A strong sporting culture, a fiery fighting spirit, and a universal love for the game. These are all recurring themes in the 103-year-old Monfortian story. The school has a strong badminton tradition which dates back more than three decades. Monfortian's numerous achievements in this sport, including an impressive collection of trophies and medals, has earned the school niche status in this area. Till today, both Monfort Junior and Secondary's badminton teams remain a force to be reckoned with. But sportsmen are not born, they're made. Monfort Badminton's origins best encapsulates this. When we took over, we looked at each other and said, how are we going to start? I start watching games, international games, national games, and I'm asking myself, how come the players are so good? And I question myself, how am I going to make my players going to be like that? Able to stretch for the ball, able to jump for the ball, able to hit the direction I want, able so I could reflect and come up with a lot of uh, techniques of how to strengthen their legs, their hands, their wrists, the whole body and stamina. So we have to start from there. Yeah, she's correct. We even came up with our own little gadget, you know. I remember it was um, a handle, a wooden handle. Then there's a string. Then we tie our own brick there. Mm. So the, the pupils have to hold and then try to roll the string up. Then let the string go down again and roll it up. So that's how they can build their wrist strength. So there were no such thing in the market. We actually came up with something like that ourselves. Before the start of the game, I always say this to them. I say, when you play, first you win for yourself. Second, you try to win for your school. So with this a philosophy, it sort of enables them to move forward. Because the moment we let them into the court, they are on their own really. And I always tell them that when you win, you also try your very best not to win just over the score. When you lose, you lose like a gentleman. You lose well. That means you give the opponent a hard fight. If they are a good player, they train hard, they will be a good player for life. So even if they leave school, they can still play the sports leisurely and then also like keep it up with, with it when they are adults. So ultimately, it is learning to play the game well and then uh, play it for life. We started winning uh, around 1983. Then we, we know that it's achievable. So we just continue working what we were doing and we could do that for many, many years after that. The two teachers' perseverance and dedication to nurturing their badminton students 
definitely paid off. In 1995, their former students were part of the Montfort Secondary team that broke Anglo-Chinese Independent School's 19-year winning streak at the B-Division final and dethroned them as champions. It's the first time we yeah. broke a record. To us, because we were in charge, and then we, it's, it's our players that we train from scratch. So therefore, it really mean more to us. <laughs> Start with a high serve if you can. Okay, if you really, really not confident enough, alright, you use your own serve. Monfort Badminton would continue to flourish in the 2000s. It was in this first decade of the new millennium that Monfort produced another gem, Derek Wong. Monfort helped me to grow as an athlete by giving me a a unique schedule so that I can balance both my sports and my studies. After my school days, I actually went on to represent the national team. Yeah, that, that was where my badminton actually propelled and I went on to play in two Olympics. Derek would go on to win a silver medal for Singapore in the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. He was also a competitor and Singapore's flag bearer in the 2016 Olympics at Rio de Janeiro. These are the medals that I won in the Commonwealth Games. This is a bronze medal and this is the silver medal. So the bronze medal is a team for the team event. Then the silver medal is for my individual men's singles event. I had to win many of the higher ranked players in order to get this silver medal. Yeah. What pushed me through was I knew that I worked very hard. Definitely there were uh, obstacles, but uh, every day I tell myself that I'm training hard for a reason uh, and this is the reason why, why all the hard work has not gone to waste. Uh. Today, Monfort Badminton is still going strong with a new generation of champions in the making. Whether it's in badminton or other sports, for decades, Monfort has been committed to training determined and resilient sportsmen who are always part of a larger team. A team that's united and respectful of each other as they strive hard to achieve shared goals. Visits to nursing homes like this one are an annual tradition for Monfort schools. It allows students to learn about care, compassion and empathy, values that will guide them to be gentlemen. You are a boy by birth, you are a man by age, you are a gentleman by choice. And that, we explain to the boy, is that to choose to be compassionate, to choose to be honourable, to walk your talk, requires you to make a decision. The kind of character you would like to develop and the kind of personality you would like people to get to know you. It's a core part of the school's mission to nurture confident and compassionate gentlemen who embody the spirit of a man for others. This is rooted in the charism of the school's founder, St. Louis Marie de Montfort. For decades, this has permeated every facet of the school experience. Montfort himself, a man who is well-read, well-learned, who has written many books himself. He has a, a whole volume of books. It's actually called a book called God Alone, which is his motto, that everything does not matter except God. So that kind of uh, value that we want our children to acquire is to learn to, to see life in depth. It's easy to teach skills, to teach knowledge, and probably through character formation to inculcate right attitude. But we also want them to learn the depth of life, the deeper aspects of who they are, what they are doing, and why they are doing what they are doing. And to be able to make a better sense of what life is and what life is inviting them to do. Monfort was then situated next to the Nativity Church. So it was very convenient for the whole school to go to church for a Mass. On the religious education aspect, uh, I was curious. And because of the catechism classes that uh, we were taught, I wanted to, to know more. And someone arranged for me to have a one-to-one -one teaching by one of the priests in the Nativity Church. 
So I was under his uh, guidance uh, for a couple of years and at the end of that he said uh, now you are ready to be baptized. I think Monfort's Catholic ethos is really very authentic because if you have a look at the, its vision, uh, which is a man for others, I think it is the very ethos of Jesus Christ himself who came not to be served but to serve. So being a man for others really means that you always put others first uh, before your own needs and being always sensitive to the, to the feelings of others. Uh, my experience here in Monfort has been very fruitful because like in everyday experiences, we learn about the Christe values and learn how to apply them in real life. The school's spirituality program and the values imparted to them by the Brothers of St. Gabriel and the other teachers over the years has also put many Monfortians on a path of serving not only the community, but God as well. In its 103-year history, an estimated 40 Monfortians have become men of the cloth, which includes both priests and brothers. This has made Monfort one of two schools which have produced the most priests in Singapore. The most recent alumnus to have become a man of the cloth is Father Cornelius Ching. His brother, Canisius, who is also an old boy, is now a teacher with the school. I think the perfect gentleman is Christ himself. He's firm, he believes in what he believes in, and yet his compassionate, his humbleness, his meekness cuts through all else. For me, when I come to the schools, I guess when I put on my elk, my cassock, that is what I represent. I need to be firm in my belief. I need to be unwavering. I need to be steadfast, a person of uh, moral standing. But yet, um, to implement the moral code takes a lot of tact, takes a lot of gentleness to win the people over first. And then, change can be effected. In our school, the P1 children, those who have not gone to church, or those who have not experienced God, the first Friday Mass, the Days of Obligations Mass, we have Living Faith or Catechism. I think it's a start somewhere. So I, I think that that's the difference if I'm uh, teaching in a Catholic school with the Catholic ethos and I'm teaching in just a normal government school. I think we give them some form of a head start in terms of their own religion. Among the many Monfortians who went on to serve the Lord as men of the cloth, three alumni have received Episcopal consecration. They are the Most Reverend Archbishop Emeritus Nicholas Chia, who served as Archbishop of Singapore from 2001 to 2013, and the Right Reverend Monsignor Sebastian Francis, Bishop of Penang, and His Grace Archbishop William Goh, the incumbent Archbishop of Singapore. My journey in Montfort, it was really an ambiance and uh, the encouragement given by the brothers and the teachers inculcating these Catholic values in us. We were very much at home. Over and above also, the school was linked to the church. The parish and the school were very much interrelated. The priest from the parish would come over to give catechism classes. So the presence also of the church does help me to nurture my faith. The great thing about a Catholic education is when this child is dysfunctional, when this child has average intelligence, we are able to help the child to realize the full potentials. And this is where I think the Monfort spirituality, a man for others and being a compassionate person. And that's what Monfort School, in my time, you know, we were all very poor and that is how we were taken care of. Whether it's serving the church, volunteering in the community, or simply lending a helping hand to those in need, when fortune gentlemen have for decades displayed compassion in their daily lives. They continue to be a beacon of hope for those around them. Not 
For decades, Monfort has also taken pride in its unique approach to student leadership. One that involves grooming a leader who is responsible, proactive, and empowered with a strong moral purpose to make a difference in the lives of others. Monfort has taught me that being a leader, you need to actually think of everyone, how they feel, and how like you have to have everybody satisfied with only one choice. Because sometimes one choice can make another person angry, but another one can be happy with that choice. As the band major, getting respect for my peers uh, is very important to have integrity at all times so they know that I am somebody that is trustworthy and somebody they can look up to, to be always true to yourself and do the right thing even when no one is watching. Over the years, Monfort has had a long tradition of producing leaders in society. Among them are four members of parliament, two of whom became cabinet ministers. A leader is someone uh, who studies uh, a subject, uh, issue, and then form a conclusion as to what is the right thing to do for the community for the future, and then persuade others that this is the direction to go. If we merely hear what other people are complaining about and without fully thinking about the issue, then we can go in the wrong direction. I think it was a very enjoyable time, like a second home, because I spent quite a lot of time outside school hours in school. It's not just in the political arena that Monfortians have lent their leadership skills. Many alumni have gone on to serve Singaporean society in various capacities. In my view, a leader is someone who has to lead by example. That's the core tenant of being a leader. And by example, it means that you're not just looking at managing people, but you have a deep understanding of what you expect of people to do yourself, which means self-experience. Mrs. Anaraj took the extra step of um, encouraging me to take part in uh, the speech competitions and writing competitions. I always remember that because that sort of helped me spark beyond just the academic aspect of, of uh, English to the practical aspects, the skills that you need to speak, to persuade. These are skills that have helped me immeasurably in my professional practice as a lawyer. He was actually the, my model pupil, you know. He was very well behaved. He wrote lovely stories. I remember that very clearly, yeah. And he was also very respectful, yeah. My son. During his time in Monfort, Ng Kok Song served as head prefect in 1966. Later in life, he became the Chief Investment Officer of the Government of Singapore Investment Corporation and founding chairman of the Singapore International Monetary Exchange. All of us who have been to uh, mission schools, the Gabrielite schools, know that part of our formation were deeply influenced by uh, the missionary brothers. And Brother Albert was the exemplar of the Gabrielite uh, missionary model. He was a very kindly man. He never scolded anyone. He would just look at you and he would give you advice. So that impressed me a lot, you know, how he could be a, a principal, a leader, without losing his temper, without, you know, a very gentle kind of leadership. Mr. Ng, along with fellow distinguished alumni like Mr. Lim Boon Heng, was also able to contribute his stewardship to the governing of his alma mater. In 1992, he became chairman of the Monfort School Management Committee. The committee was set up by a group of passionate alumni to continue the Brothers of St. Gabriel's legacy in Monfort to provide a strategic direction for the future of the school. The school was, uh, you know, breaking down, facilities were inadequate. So we wanted to build a new school. So, a bunch of us, uh, old boys, we got together and said, let's help the Brothers of St. Gabriel to rebuild the new Monfort School. In addition to that, 
You know, coming together was an opportunity for me to stay in contact with my classmates, my schoolmates. So it was wonderful, you know, see old friends and then work together to, to benefit the school that we all treasure and, and we want to give something back. Today, the school continues to be supported by dedicated alumni who continue to contribute their leadership and other skills to the school. We see ourselves as supporting the school. You know, we would like to see ourselves as the third pillar of the school. First pillar being the uh, school, the teachers and the administrative staff. The second being the parent, the parents and the parent volunteers. And ourselves being alumni, coming back to the school, offering our time and see how we can support the school. The school needs alumni, you know, to impart experiences, knowledge, knowledge that cannot be learned in the school to the present pupils of the of, of Wonford. With alumni continuing to guide and support the school, its rich legacy is guaranteed to be preserved for years to come. It's a legacy of unfortunes contributing to society as scholars, sportsmen, gentlemen and leaders. Knowingly and unknowingly, they continue to follow the footsteps of their founder, St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, to be a light to the world.